With the cooperation of Seventh-day Adventists, researchers had proved that windborne germs could infect a small group of people under field conditions. Now, with the help of monkeys, they would try to determine if a biological weapon could match the impact of a hydrogen bomb. The test began early in 1965, as barges took position near a Pacific atoll called Johnston. Inside the barges were cages filled with monkeys. The monkeys were both on the deck of the barge and inside the hold of the barge. There were also human beings wearing spacesuits and probably quite nervous. A low-flying military plane sprayed a 32-mile line of germs. Germs that cause a lethal disease, tularemia, or rapid fever. Drifting over a vast swath of ocean, the microbes remained infectious for 60 miles. The barges were towed back to the island, and in the next days, the monkeys became ill. Ultimately, about half of the monkeys became sick, and of them, most of them died. These large-scale field tests demonstrated beyond any shadow of a doubt the feasibility of biological warfare. And that is why we know that one particular agent, when properly stabilized and properly disseminated, is a terrific, very effective weapon system. In theory, a single jet could knock out a city. It could perhaps infect as many as half the people in Los Angeles with tularemia. Though skeptics said the results were oversold, Dietrich researchers were jubilant. After 20 years of hard work, they believed they had made the case that biological weapons deserved a place in the U.S. arsenal. In fact, they may have succeeded too well. I think it frightened the U.S. government. It was relatively easy to make biological weapons, relatively easy to disperse them. It wasn't as difficult by any means as building a hydrogen bomb. There was a thinking here that we don't really want to publicize how powerful these weapons are because all we're really doing is proving to the rest of the world that biological weapons work. <laughs> 